How hard was it being away at first? Because you you left after high school to LA? It was a couple of years after high school. I mean, to be honest, in the beginning, it wasn't that hard because I was coming back like every other month to play shows and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, it was hard getting my footing in LA though. Like I was taking classes at UCLA Extension at night and that was kind of it. Like I didn't know anybody really. Um, and I would go like weeks without speaking to another human because <laughs> I didn't like, I wasn't out like hustling shows. I didn't know, really know how to do that. So I'd like fly home, play some shows and then fly back to LA and then be just go hermit. back to my house and be a hermit. <laughs> yeah. I ate cereal for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And then like a couple nights a week, I would go to my class. Sometimes I would talk to people. Sometimes I would just take notes and go back home. And um, it was a weird like, dichotomy of like coming home playing shows for people and then going back and not mm -hmm. seeing anyone yeah um i don't know how healthy hermiting <laughs> is for me but eventually i found my way in la but um i've had definitely like real moments of being homesick mm -hmm. so i know what that's like but i do also like i meet people out on the content that are like i haven't been home in like a year and a half and i'm like i don't even i'm so lucky that I get to come home for work, mm -hmm. you know, um, so often, but, um, yeah. yeah, it's crazy to hear that coming from Hawaii mm -hmm. where, you know, at the least, maybe you go home for Christmas, mm -hmm. New Year's, mm -hmm. maybe Thanksgiving, th those events, you know, graduations. And yeah, I've met other people who are like, yeah, I haven't seen my parents in like three years or <laughs> I haven't been home in like nine years. I'm like, Nine years. That's crazy. Yeah. I guess just the dynamics are different, culture is different. Maybe your relationship with your family is different. Mm -hmm. So it's not always the same. But hearing that was a culture shock in itself. Yeah. Um, being around other people from you know from um the states. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you, I mean, like for me as a kid, getting on a plane and going anywhere was like a huge event. Mm -hmm. And I think like you've traveled a lot too. I know you did the Peace Corps. My mom was in the Peace Corps no too. No way, what? Yeah, Where? yeah, yeah. In Korea. Oh, super cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think we kind of like normalize just, I'll just get on a plane and I'll be home in mm -hmm. five hours. But like, I know for a lot of people, that's like an event that happens like once a year, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even if we want to talk about being in the Peace Corps in Madagascar, some people never even leave their, oh, village yeah. or their town. I bet. Yeah. So or some people had, have never even been on a plane. Do you keep yeah. in touch with your fellow Peace Corps yeah. volunteers? Yeah. Um, once, so I just, I, because I live here, mm -hmm. a lot of people come here. So I would say like every year there's like one or two people that visit. Oh, that's or cool. There's, there's a friend that's coming, I think, next month. Um, so I'll probably meet up. I usually just get, grab dinner or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool that I get to, you know, keep um, keep up with them, reminisce. And then a lot of the Malagasy people, they're all on Facebook. So they always try to message. That's and, great. Yeah. My host mom always is... Uh, Saying, asking when I'm going to come back. <laughs> How do you think that experience changed you when you came back home? Uh, well, I mean, it it was the most life changing experience of my life. I think just the perspective you gain mm -hmm. from being in a foreign country, and it's not like going on a little visit. You're, yeah. you're living yeah. there, and like the goal of the Peace Corps is to live like the locals. Yep. So you know, you get paid according to how they get paid. Mm -hmm. You live in the same conditions as them. You know, so you get water from a well. You take bucket baths. Wow. So all of those things just really make you grateful for everything we have yeah. here the fact that we can do this and we have hot water <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a shower yeah, yeah. you know where i would have to go down to my well get buckets of water put it in this other thing take it up to my house put it in my other um this bigger bucket and then uh put it on like a kettle warm it up and if you don't have a kettle you just put it on the stove to warm yeah. it up, like the gas stove and i gotta go down sweep out my bath area and then you know you gotta be really um strategic with with your bucket baths you know so you gotta go okay so i got like one bucket to <laughs> get get myself with then i gotta shower or, i mean um lather yep. up and then you want to try to make sure you you wash everywhere so that you're not wasting the water right, so right, everything right. just comes down and then you want to have like one or two at the end so like especially if it's cold you know um so yeah and if you didn't have hot water and sometimes like i had to take a cold bucket bath and like really freezing temperature before it was like the trendy thing to do for health <laughs> <laughs> yeah before exactly <laughs> i was taking cold fun before it was even <laughs> yeah 
So just those things and just like being away, like here we complain about potholes and like my my site, I was like yeah. a crazy road and it took four hours just to get from where I live to the capital city. So, you know, stuff like that. So I, I don't really find myself complaining a lot about yeah, a lot of yeah. things. But I think the hardest part coming back from the Peace Corps is trying to fit in again with society mm -hmm. and trying not to like, not so much judge, but um, be like, lessens people's pro lessen people's problem like when people are like oh this was so hard yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. ah but in the peace corps you right, know like right, right, right. oh man my food took 20 minutes i was like well in the peace corps we took like <laughs> you know and like ah <laughs> oh, the hot water went out and it's just like trying not to like compare and sure. like downplay people's problem because you had it harder yeah that's that was probably the hardest thing for me and this you're a changed person after so mm -hmm. Like a lot of the people that I hung out with, like in high school, I mean, um, in college while I was here, like I'm still friends with them, but mm -hmm. I don't hang out because we're just like different people. Yeah. And um, so it's 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 a little lonely at times. Mm. Like coming back, I really had to try to find my own place here again. And then I guess that's why I just kind of did my race to 50k. I just got into business, and that was kind of my my way of living my life now. So it wasn't so much just like doing the normal things that people do and yeah. hanging out i kind of just carved my own path because i was i felt different you know i yeah. just saw the world differently yeah 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 that would be hard because you want to like share the perspective of like how lucky we are mm -hmm. but you also i mean you don't want to preach <laughs> yeah you know, I constantly like oh here he goes again yeah, yeah, i can't exactly. say anything like <laughs> yeah yeah I was like, you think Star was talking about uh, reintegrating post pageant life? Yeah. Yeah, you need that mm -hmm. for Peace Corps too. <laughs> exactly. So we have training sessions about oh, okay. that yeah. coming back, and then they also offer therapy and stuff like that. So just being able to um, talk to somebody—that's why it's awesome when we reconnect with mm -hmm. the Peace Corps volunteers because mm -hmm. we get to reminisce about all those things, and nobody really gets it. Like I can tell you how much it sucked, like getting stuck in a cyclone and sleeping yeah. on our bus and walking yeah. eight hours back yeah. to my site. And you're like, oh, cool, that sounds like it was terrible. But like, you don't really know how it feels, yeah, yeah. right? Um, or even like on your end, like having to tour and go to f all these far places, waking up early, going to sleep late. Like, mm -hmm. so for somebody who's never experienced it, I'm just like, wow, that sounds very exhausting. But I don't really know how yeah. it feels, right? Yeah. So it's just a different yep. perspective. And, you know, shared trauma is is a great way to connect with people. So, for sure. You know, we, we get those unique experiences that we get to bond over as other Peace Corps volunteers. My my mom had multiple people um, move here, I think after the Peace Corps. So I grew up like every once or twice a year, they would all get together. Oh, so cool. It's just cool. And I got to grow up with a lot of their kids and stuff. So, but I know that bond is like a really special one. Yeah. Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's even Malagasy people that live here. Oh, really? That I've, I've met. I spent like the National um, Independence Day with them mm -hmm like a year or two ago and oh, that's cool. it's so cool getting to try to speak Malagasy again and just to see them coming from halfway across the yeah. world to to live over here it's yeah really really special I encourage anybody to apply I, I say it's anybody can do it but it's not for everybody yeah because it is challenging it is hard um, I had a lot of health problems as well like I had my appendix removed I had fleas burrow into my feet and I had to dig out the eggs are and, you serious yeah I had I had that twice. I had oh. schistosomiasis, like this waterborne disease, food poisoning. Oh my gosh! gosh. Everything. Yeah, you're not you're yeah. not selling it too hard. Right now. <laughs> oh, but it's great. It's, but great. it's great. I got free surgery. You sound like parents yeah. when they go like, "Oh, how's it being a parent?" I'm so exhausted. They won't shut up. But no, but it's great. You should totally do it. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it, it is great, but. Um, there are, it's it's gonna it's gonna be hard but it's gonna be you, worth it you don't regret doing it ever no, right no it's yeah. it i am the person i am today because yeah, of the peace yeah, yeah. the confidence i gained the hardships i went through um yeah i mean i i, I knew what i was getting myself into mm -hmm. so i went in with the mindset that this is all going to be part of the experience the good and the bad and it just it helped me um just become a better person, become more emotional, become more connected with mm -hmm. others, myself. Also just um, being more realistic with things. So I was more of like an unrealistic optimist, like mm -hmm. everything's awesome mm -hmm. and nothing's bad. Mm -hmm. Gotta always smile. And then be, seeing other people like 
cry and talk about really hard stuff mm. and um, being open about stuff like, no, this sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it really helped me kind of tone down my optimism so it's not so much like toxic optimism. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, no, yeah, this does suck, but I'm still going to have a positive attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, so that's the thing that I, I carry today is like, yes, there, my life isn't perfect and I still have struggles and hardships, but they don't affect me because I know that I can get through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's... Acknowledge the suck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just all part of the experience. That's, yeah. that, that was my mantra every time. It's like, I'm in the hospital... I'm just like, no, this is part of the experience. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my in my house in my little corner, with, trying to use my flashlight to go, go under my foot oh and dig my out gosh. something with like a syringe needle, and then like a, like a blood coming down my my foot. I'm just like, well, oh, this is part of the experience. Well, hold up, <laughs> fleas can lay eggs inside of your foot. They're called parasi. It's like this sand flea. Okay, that you you usually get on the coast. So they, oh. they burrow inside and then you could see like their butt hanging or like these little feet hanging out. Um, and that's how you know it is. So people get them on their toes. I got one under like my heel uh -huh. and then which is a hard spot to get. It's and then I got skin, a couple man. on my my toe after we went on this like hiking trip, whatever. Right. And yeah. <laughs> well, imagine if you went and it was like all easy and you had nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. got some real stories. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <of> <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's um I'll definitely write a book in more detail because I have a book that I, I turned my blog into a book. Mm -hmm. So there's some fun stories there. Um, but I, yeah, I want to do like a bigger, more in-depth book about it. Awesome. But, because, yeah, I think it's just it's such a unique experience. I don't know how long it'll be around now. I know it's not as popular as oh, it was, it you know, mm. back in the 60s, yeah, 70s, yeah, 80s, sure. especially post-COVID. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see how... How long it sticks around, but yeah, very grateful for that experience. Yeah.